Recall that the dual problem of this minimization problem is defined to be this linear programming problem here. There are a couple of important results concerning this primal dual pair. The first is that if you have a feasible solution x star for the primal problem and a feasible solution y star for the dual problem, then the objective function value of the primal problem is at least the objective function value of the dual problem. And so if c transpose x star is the same as y star transpose b, then you know that x star is the optimal solution to the primal problem and y star is an optimal solution to the dual problem. This result is called weak duality. There's another result which we saw before. It's called strong duality. Is that if the primal has an optimal solution, you can in fact find an optimal solution for the dual problem whose objective function value is the same as the optimal value for the primal problem. A consequence of this is that if this can be solved to optimality, then you can find a proof for that. You can simply obtain a dual optimal solution and because the objective function value of that dual solution has to match the optimal value of the primal problem, you know that you cannot do any better. And so what you have is indeed optimal. Notice that the definition of the dual requires the problem to be in this form. Even though it is possible to transform any linear programming problem into this form, it is perhaps more convenient if we can write down a dual problem without having to alter the primal problem too much. And so we're going to look at a definition of the dual problem when the primal problem can have all kinds of constraints. And we also see that there are certain constraints that can be separated out from these constraints to reduce the number of dual variables that we need. And to motivate definition, let's consider the following. So suppose that the problem we are looking at is minimizing c transpose x subject to ax equals b, and x is greater than or equal to zero. Now, we can convert this problem into this form as follows. And now we can form the dual problem of this. So instead of specifying a single y, we're going to split the dual variables into three chunks, where u is associated with the system a is greater than or equal to b, v is associated with the system minus a x greater than or equal to minus b, and p is associated with x greater than or equal to zero. So what this means is u will be u1 up to um, v will be v1 up to vm, and p is going to be p1 up to pn. Now let's rewrite things a little bit. So this is the same as u transpose b minus v transpose b subject to u transpose a minus v transpose a plus p transpose equals c transpose and u, v, p are non-negative. Now this can be rewritten as follows. Because the entries in p are non-negative, we can erase this by turning this into a less than or equal to inequality. And that way, we don't really need the p variables. And now u minus v is the difference of two non-negative vectors. And so we can replace this with just a y that is not restricted to be non-negative. And so this problem is equivalent to y transpose b subject to y transpose a less than equals c transpose. And so we are going to define the dual of this problem to be this problem here. And the duality results will carry over. In particular, if you pick a feasible solution to this problem here, its objective function value is going to be bounded below by the objective function value of any feasible solution here. And if this problem has an optimal solution, then this problem will also have an optimal solution, and its optimal value coincides with the optimal value of the primal problem. Here's a table that shows us how to form the dual problem when the primal problem can have any type of linear constraint, and the variables in the primal problem can be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, or have no such constraint. So our picture looks like this. What this red box signifies is you can have a different kind of constraint for each constraint. And here, each variable can be either greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, or constrained to be neither. And what goes here will depend on the kind of variables you have in the primal problem, and what kind of variables you have in the dual will depend on the constraints in the primal problem. 
So the way to figure this out is as follows. For example, if you have a greater than or equal to constraint in the primal problem, then in the dual problem, the associated variable will be a non-negative variable. And if we look at this line here, if you have a variable in the primal problem constrained to be non-positive, then the corresponding dual constraint will be a greater than or equal to inequality. So let's look at an example that illustrates this. So we want to write down the dual problem of this. Now, this is in brackets because x3 free is not really a constraint, but we write it down so that we know what to do when we form its associated dual constraint. So here, the matrix A is going to be the coefficient matrix of this system here. And B is going to be the right hand side. And C is going to be 2 minus 3 and 4. So if we follow this recipe here, we first write down maximizing 4y1 plus 6y2 subject to some constraints. So we're going to take the tuple y1, y2 transpose times this, and that will give us three constraints. So the first constraint will have y1 plus 0y2 something, and the right hand side will be 2 coming from the first component of C. And the second constraint will have y1 minus 7y2 on the left, and on the right will be minus 3. And for the third constraint, we'll have y1 plus 5y2 something 4. Now for the variables, this is a greater than or equal to constraint. So y1, according to here, will be a greater than or equal to 0 variable. And for y2, it is associated with an equality constraint. And so y2 will be a free variable. We now fill in the relations here. So for the first constraint, it corresponds to the first variable, and it's a greater than or equal to zero variable, so this is going to be a less than or equal to constraint, which is given by this line here. Now for this constraint, it corresponds to x2 less than or equal to zero, so this is going to be a greater than or equal to constraint. And finally, x3 is free, so the third constraint is going to be an equality. And so this is the dual problem of this minimization problem. And the weak duality and strong duality that we mentioned before apply to this pair of linear programming problems.